Nothing like it. Awesome. Dramatic. You can't really expect us to to act like that wasn't a, 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 a moment in the Don's history. My favourite fight of the night would have to be Doug's. Doug, yeah, is that, that South London shit. There were so many iconic moments, some that were on camera and some that weren't. One of them being when myself, Salvin, spoke to Doug behind in the tunnel, in the build up to his walkout, and Salvin prayed for him, and I also spoke to him on a level of, like, we're here now. There's no going back. We've got to go all the way now, and everyone's here to support you. Big Doug's entrance. Doug's, Doug's entrance was a moment in history. And the next fighter, Big Doug. It was vibrant. Vibrant when the music came on, because it brought me back to when I was younger, listening to gigs and stuff like that. So when he came out and came out to it, I was like, yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good still. I grew up on gigs. Everyone who's from South London grew up on that music. So when he's played that, it's just like the whole room was jumping for him, ready for him. A moment where the whole culture of where we grew up and the boxing world were marinated and it just meshed together perfectly into a, a moment that everyone was putting on all social media platforms. It was the energy behind it, the work rate that Big Doug would put in to get to this moment. Um, I will never forget that moment. I didn't get to experience that because I was in a ring with Benny Joseph. I was in the ring hoping that once Doug got in, they wouldn't come nose to nose and end up throwing punches before the fight had actually started because there was a heated build up. Benny came down from Glasgow the day before and he was in Camberwell jogging and skipping, tagging Doug in Instagram videos at 3am on fight day. Doug's pal, who's like three times my size, is shouting into the ring. F this, I'm gonna jump in and fight you, don't worry about Doug. And I'm all like, please, please, no. It was a serious moment, and I was lucky enough to be behind Doug on the walkout. When I saw Doug emerge on that stage, and you know, he was limbering up and jumped in the ring. I knew this man was ready to do damage. It wasn't no set up like protect Doug. The guy was coming to win. Benny came and he was an opponent, opponent that was so well matched because he came there and he was sending in that, he was sending directs I should say to Doug, he would at him on his story. So we had a fight, he was ready in game. And Doug knew that if he got, he went into that fight with nothing less than 100%. He could potentially have lost that fight. One of the kind of best parts that I saw within the fight was seeing the preparation that Doug had made with the TUA gym, obviously Gavin Shack, who had worked on his catching and countering to the point that he actually hurt Benny so badly that Benny could just about walk. proud of Doug because um, I know how hard he trained and how hard he worked being someone that's not a boxer representing for bigger guys who aren't necessarily athletic um, so I was proud 
I was nervous. If I'm honest with you, I was nervous because that's my close friend of mine and I didn't know who was going to win the fight. I'll be so honest because um, the other guy had more boxing experience than him. Some might say the other guy was fitter than him, so I was nervous. Um, but yeah, I've made many proud and nervous as my two, my two closest things I could say. I love my boy Dugger, but oh, <laughs> when that bell rang for that fight over here, I swear that guy was in, he was on Mars. <laughs> he was finished. Any piece of energy he had, he didn't have it at all after that. Once that bell rang, ding, he, gone. Gone with the stars. To see Doug to the point where he couldn't move no more, just about breathing, and then win the fight with his eyes closed and his arms up like that it was like that's what that's what we was in it for. Your winner with unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner. And the fact that trash, this is not your man, show me facts, I don't battle rap. I had I had a lot of mixed feelings during that main event. Number one, there was a sense of relief that we had got to the last fight of the evening and nothing had gone wrong. Everybody who had fought had got out there healthy. Number two, I was nervous for Ginge. Because Ginge is someone I've got a soft spot for. Very close with him. <sighs> that was a tough one. First fighter to the ring, Joseph Merrill. Uh, it's a tough one because with that fight, obviously, Pat I'm cool with and Ginger I'm cool with. Because remember that throughout the camp, I've been seeing Pat. Pat, Pat trains with Donny, Pat trains with SK, Pat trains with all the man in that TUA. Ginger as well, Ginger as he does. Pat's entrance music, I'm not gonna lie, was mad. For me, personally, the main event was tough because I'm friends with Ginger and I'm friends with um, Pat. I'm friends with both of them. I'm friends with Pat on a boxing level. He, when I was in camp, I sparred with Pat. He was helping me out, training with me, um, done a lot for me during my camp. Proper nice guy. So he's a friend of mine that I want to see win. Then on the other hand, I've got Ginge, who I'm also friends with. When I done my ACL, I done my rehab with Ginge. Um, member of the Dons. So that was a tough experience. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a flipping, a brawl, fam. Oh, that was mad. Have we put have we put somebody in a situation that they're not prepared for? I think Ginger was more shocked than I was. Do you understand? So my emotions, of course, when you see your friend get dropped like that. It's like, ah, oh. but because I've been in and around boxing, that's the sport. So there was no shame in it. I didn't look and think, ah, oh, Ginger's being embarrassed. It was just like, ah, oh. yeah, he's dropped him. His actual test wasn't the fact that he got knocked down. It was whether he could get back up. When Ginger, get up, get up. And he did. He got up. I 
respect to Ginge because Ginge, Ginge got back up and didn't fold and he went at, he went at, he went all out for Ginge came out of there with the utmost respect because he put himself in the actual cauldron, surrounded, sellout event. And Pat Gabe was told the simple instruction, if you don't get him out there, don't come back. If you don't get him down, don't come back. And they both fulfilled those, th those promises. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have scored the fight. 39-37, 39-37, 39-37. Your winner, by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner. Where's SK? SK. Where's SK going? I, th I thought when one take called out SK, it was a bit childish. If you can hear me, Daddy train hop, ready for him like that, but it's me you get on when you're ready, man. The moment one take called out SK was a perfect storm. SK, I mean SK's corner 100 million percent, even if he's in the wrong, because he's my, that's my family, yeah. But I've been around, I'm, I'm so exposed to boxing now that I get it, do you understand? I understand that one take wants to fight SK. Doesn't mean that he that he wants to kill SK or he wants bad on SK. He wants to fight him. So when he called out SK, remember I know Rambo, his training team. I know John. I know a lot of his team. I know his cousin. So I know one take. I can't really say we. What you on? What you on, bro? My thing's out. Cool. You want to fight SK? Are you sure? I went and got SK, remember? Because he called out SK. Yeah. Oh shit! Is it? To get a draw, I thought, the guy must be, he must have something in him. Why would you want SK? SK is somebody on a run of form where he's undefeated, he lives and breathes the sport. I haven't, I haven't seen enough of one take. So for me to see somebody come to a DFC, and he knows that the Dons are there, and make that kind of moment for him, I thought, you're brave, but I hope you know what you're asking for. Wait, he's going to be up. Bubba, I've had five fights, five wins. I'm talking shit tonight, bro. 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 That's bravery. DFC 2 is going to be twice the beast that DFC 1 was. We're just getting started, man. The first, the first event was very good. The feedback from it was fantastic. A lot of my people that I go to gym went to that actual fight and they, they loved it. When have Don's ever sold you a short straw? DFC 2 Valhalla. You've chosen that word for a reason. You have to be a, a, a warrior to enter Valhalla. So if you want a good night, you want to see some good fights, we're now giving you the culture mixed in with the boxing community. DFC 2, the place to be, man. You don't want to miss this. Why would you? What, what, would you, what else would you be doing? Get behind it and look forward to it. Don't miss it. There's, a, there's something there for everybody. DFC 2, welcome to Valhalla. SK SK oh. Where's SK going? Listen, I'm not sure where SK is right now, but I'm sure he can hear you, Jonathan. You got any words for him right now? Like that, but it's me and you get on when you're ready, man. A lot of people talk, 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 but I'm here showing that I'm fighting. I ain't talking, I'm fighting. Bubba, I've had five fights, five wins, and he was dog shit in that
Would you like to see SK Russell, Jonathan Barber, KFC 2?